Good morning, I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day. Now, I am lucky enough to be in a position where I make money from writing music, and it's very stressful, it's incredibly hard work, I don't sleep very much, I don't have much of a social life, and I don't make very much money either, but I wouldn't be doing anything else. And about 80% of the music that I write isn't, you know, posted on this channel, it's stuff that I do with other directors and producers for short films and things like that. So media composition is what I have always wanted to do. And I thought that what I talk about today are three film scores that changed my life, or at least were hugely influential to me from a young age. Now I'm not talking about my top three film scores in general, although like a couple of these will be in my sort of top five list, I guess, but these aren't supposed to be just, you know, my favorite film scores ever written, but these are the ones that I would say had the most profound impact on me when I was younger. These are the pieces of music that were written that massively influenced me in what I'm doing now and ultimately were part of what made me decide that I wanted to write music. So the first of these film scores is a score that had massive impact on me as I'm sure it did lots and lots of people. This is not gonna be a particularly original choice and I'm lucky enough to own it on vinyl, but that is the score to The Shawshank Redemption by Thomas Newman. Now this I would consider to be one of my favorite film scores of all time. I can remember watching The Shawshank Redemption probably when I was too young to understand some of the things that were going on in it, but still being completely blown away by the score and you know I'd, I'd heard a lot of film music already I've always been a very affluent consumer of media watching films is something I've always enjoyed doing but I think that this was probably one of the first films that I kind of really fell in love with the music. Thomas Newman is one of my favorite composers in general. I could list so many amazing scores that he's done, like Meet Joe Black, Finding Nemo, American Beauty, but this was probably my very first introduction to that sound. The piece of music from this that had the biggest impact on me is just the end credit piece. As the camera pulls away from the beach and you see the two characters embracing, that end credit piece starts playing with this big timpani roll and the orchestra comes in and that I listened to so much after I saw this film for the first time. Just over and over in my room, I found it so powerful. And I can remember once my mum came upstairs probably to like tell me to go to bed or something. And I can remember her asking me, oh, what are you listening to? This is really nice, I like this. And that was so bizarre for me because at that point in my life, especially, I was listening to mostly bands like Gorgoroth and Cradle of Filth. So I think she was just relieved to hear something that wasn't that coming from my room. But I remember feeling a weird sense of like validation in a way. Hearing her say that about this piece of film music just made me think, yeah, you know, what, actually, this is this is a real music that I'm listening to right now and it's great. And obviously, like, I don't think that anything that isn't film musical classical isn't real music. But yeah, it was a nice sort of sense of validation I got. But yeah, so that's that's the first score on this list. Shawshank Redemption by Thomas Newman. Moving on, the second score is by Alan Silvestri and is his music for the film Castaway. Again, a very well-known film and an equally well-known score, but this was something that I found profoundly moving when I first watched it. And again, I was quite young. These are all experiences that I had when I was younger. That's kind of what I mean. It's not inspiration that you get when you're 18, 19 years old. You know, this is stuff that I think really sort of got into my subconscious. But yeah, after watching Castaway for the first time, I was just just enamored by the music, especially when it first comes in, because um, I'm not sure if you know this or not, but uh, apparently there was a creative decision made by the director or the composer. It could have been 50-50 decision with both of them, but in the film, there is no music except for the Elvis Presley song that starts off the film until he gets off the island. When he manages to get past the breakwater, is on his raft and he turns around and looks back. That's when you hear the first swell of music come in. You know, it's well over an hour into the film, I think. And the idea behind that was it would heighten and emphasize the sense of isolation. So it's more like you were there on the island with this guy. It's just sublimely beautiful, that score. And the, the main theme as well, it kind of reminds me of the second movement from Vorjak's New World Symphony, because um, it starts off, when the New World Symphony starts off with the cor anglais um might be a cor anglais in this as well could be an oboe but you have that you know the woodwind instrument introducing this melody that's then carried off by other instruments anyway i just can remember being so into it and this was in a time before i had spotify you know i couldn't just immediately go on my phone and listen to the music again i had to you know wait till my dad was off the family computer and then see if i could find a probably very bad quality mp3 upload of the music on youtube but it didn't stop me from seeking it out and listening to it and i can remember like even from a very young age there have been certain pieces of music that when i heard them it would be like i couldn't get through the next few days without knowing that I could hear it again. First example of that was actually with Be Like That by Three Doors Down. I can remember watching American Pie 2, I think it is, and they played that and I can remember just finding it so emotional, like that 
that chord progression is like the first time I'd heard it properly in that context, I guess. But anyway, yeah, so I made sure that I found other copies, probably made some really bad YouTube to mp3.com <laughs> downloads of it. And yeah, just listen to it all the time. To this day, I, it's still music that if I want to listen to that, I will stop doing everything else and I'll just sit and just listen to it because it's absolutely wonderful. So yeah, that's uh, score number two, Alan Silvestri's score to the fantastic film Castaway. Right, the third film on this list is by Hans Zimmer and is from the 2004 film King Arthur. Now this, in my opinion, is like peak era Hans Zimmer. So it's a little bit later than when he was doing things like Rain Man, but it's not quite the inception, globally recognized superstar style Hans Zimmer that we get now. This was in the middle. Films like King Arthur, films like The Last Samurai, where he was just the king of epic orchestral music to accompany you know, battles, things like Gladiator as well, you know. That, to me, as much as I love pretty much all of Hans Zimmer's music, my favorite of Hans Zimmer's music is definitely from that era, sort of 2000 to 2010. That's my favorite Hans Zimmer moment. And this film, King Arthur, with Kira Knightley, if I remember correctly, yeah. That was my introduction, sort of, well, my, my conscious introduction to that type of Hans Zimmer music. That was when I realized the composer, and I realized what he was able to do with this film. And obviously, you know, I was a typical kid. I loved watching big epic battles, but I can remember again just being blown away by how much I knew at the time the music was affecting this. It was kind of like, if this didn't have this music going on right now, it wouldn't be as cool. I can remember exactly when I first watched it as well. It was when I was a chorister, I used to be a chorister at Gloucester Cathedral, and every Sunday we would do Eucharist in the morning, and then we'd have a couple of hours break, and then we'd come back for Evensong. So in that break, I went to my best friend's house, uh, it was still my best friend, Will, and we watched King Arthur on a little TV in the living room, and I was really excited because I wasn't allowed to watch it. It was a 12, and I was like 10 or 11 at this time. But we watched it, I loved it. I can just remember having this feeling afterwards of like, I have to hear that music again. You know, I can't just ignore that that happened. I have to know that I can hear that again without having to watch the film. Because I would do this sometimes if there was, like with Castaway, I did this um, when I couldn't necessarily find certain bits of music that I wanted to hear. I would put the film on again and skip to the scene that I wanted just because it was so important to me that I had to hear this. If I really liked a piece of music, I had to know that I could listen to it again. Probably part of the reason why I spend so much money on vinyl these days. Anyway, there we have it. Those are the three film scores that changed my life. Although I'm gonna have to make another one of these videos because just in the process of filming this, I've remembered two other film scores that were equally significant to my appreciation of music. I would love to know what film scores or soundtracks are really important to you or if you've had any of those moments yourself where you hear a piece of music and you love it so much that you kind of are restless until you know that you can listen to it again. So yeah, let me know all of that down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in hearing any of my music, there's a link to my Spotify down in the description there. And I've got a new ambient single coming out next Friday. It's called In Flight and very excited for you to hear it. Uh, there'll be a pre-save link to that down in the description as well, as well as all of my social media and all that stuff as well. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really do hope that you've enjoyed this. Have an absolutely fantastic day and I'll see you very soon.